Information Architect for uh, TCS at India Relationship at Seattle. Um, I am uh, going to present a QoS concept for voice over LTE services. So let's directly start from introduction. Uh, one of my friends asked me that if I have an LTE enabled device and if I can download SIP client, Skype, and I can make a voice call, then why should AT&T is deploying voice over LTE and modifying and upgrading their entire network? Why would any service provider can need to upgrade their network in, 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 a, in order to support the voice over IP services? Well, <coughs> my answer is read this abstract. This is an abstract from an annual performance report made by FCCC regarding uh, US telecom service uh, U U US telecom service providers uh, performance so what they're saying is that existing service providers in US they are able to provide VoIP services however uh, VoIP quality may suffer during times when household bandwidth is shared by other services and the VoIP measurements utilized for this report were not designed to detect such e effects so what it means is that VoIP services using current IP infrastructure runs very well in sunny day scenario. When there is no congestion, routers are not fully utilized. But when there is a congestion, when there is your peak load are increasing, at that time, voice quality may suffer. We call it rainy day scenario. Second thing is, currently there is no way to measure end-to-end -end voice call flow. So we can measure RTP traffic using probes, but there is no way to measure end-to-end -end from the client to the server. Whatever voice stream is going, there is no way to measure this defect. In my presentation will explain current shortfalls in a VoIP infrastructure and 3GPP's QoS framework as a solution. <coughs> as a solution. Now let's talk about um, first why service providers want VoIP. Done? Okay, thank you. Uh, why service providers, service providers across the world want to go for VoIP? Currently, service providers worldwide has three networks to manage. One is 2G, deployed in 1990s. One is 3G, deployed in 2000. And then 4G, which we call LTE, which is deployed in, or oh, are being deployed uh, from 2010. Now, 2G and 3G are mostly centric voice they are mostly are there to provide you a voice, while 4G network is mostly so, so gives you the data network, data um, mobile broadband connectivity. Now, service provider is thinking that if I am able to give my voice traffic using the data network, then I may eventually retire 2G and 3G also. So if we can build that common core, which for all the services he is offering, including the voice, that this common core will eliminate most of its problems. When you have common core, then you have a common order management system, single inventory management system, single CRM system, and single your uh, provisioning system. Currently, there is a mess. There are lots of, there are so many boxes doing the same thing. So for that, that bigger consolidation, they want voice to run over IP and so that they can have a common core. Now, mobile broadband technology as LTE do have that capability. As I told that, uh, if you have a LTE-enabled device and if you install your Skype client, you are able to make Skype calls. So there, there is a capability is there. But currently, what happens is most of LTE service providers offer VoIP as a best effort service. And BE service model is not suitable to offer required performance and service level commitments as a real-time application as voice. Why so? When you see BE service model, it, in BE, all the applications are treated equally. So when uh, a white packet reaches at your, at, edge, edge router, at your router, and when you have a YouTube video packet reaches at your router, router doesn't differentiate between two. It takes whosoever comes first for a processing, and it processes. For, for a router, doesn't have the intelligence to <coughs> distinguish between a voice packet and a data packet. So what happens? In sunny day scenario, it works fine. But when congestion happens, at that time what happens is that uh, now any supply chain, uh, when there is a queue, let's say you are a queue to get a bus ticket, or a white packet is standing in a queue at the edge of router. When there is a queue, 
you have a longer waiting time. In telecommunication, where there is a queue at edge router, you have a longer delay. So this delay will increase your latency. Now what is latency? Latency is a when data packet, a VoIP packet in our case, when it travels from one end point to the another end point. In voice communication, it's from my mouth to the listener's ear. That time, that time a packet takes, that is called latency. In voice, the latency should be minimum of 400 milliseconds. So what happens that when there's a congestion happens, the voice packet suffers the latency. Data packet suffers the latency too. But again, there is a user perception difference. For example, if you are in sitting in front of your computer and you are opening your email or you are in a chatting or you are opening a YouTube session, you will not be that if it's a packet you received is a one or two or three second late, you are not that sensitive about that. You will not notice it. It's a tolerable. But when I'm talking to my friend over phone, and if my packet I'm getting is 800 millisecond late, then it is a serious quality issue for me. What will happen? There is a gap. You can see a silence gap in between. There is a voice overlapping. There will be an echo. And finally, your call will drop. So 400 millisecond from data perspective, that latency is acceptable. But from voice perspective, it is not acceptable. Now this 400 millisecond, it is not my own figure. This is uh, this is ITU's recommendation in which they have clearly mentioned that any communication mouth to ear delay latency, if it's below 400 millisecond, then it's a conditionally acceptable. But if it goes above 400 millisecond, then it is not acceptable. So this is they have taken lots of samples and walk orders and different geographic zone. And after that, this is an observation fact. This is not any logic or formula. This is an observation observed fact. So it means that voice designers is to make sure that their one-way latency, their network should not have more than 400 milliseconds. Now in voice, what happens is that this figure is, for example, I give you two scenarios here. In RF principles, as my, my earlier friend told, that when you go away from a cell tower, you are going to get a weak signal. We all know that, right? The man you go in the tunnel or go in the, in the, in the, in the basement, in the lift, you are getting bad signal. When you are getting bad signal, your bandwidth allocation will also reduce. Right? So what happens is that let's say a guy called Mohan is here and making a call to his wife. And since he is in a weak coverage zone, his uh, voice quality will be poor because then he has to do lots of retransmissions and the available bandwidth is very less. Now the second cause is, now second cause is that Packet, the bigger the packet is, the more the processing power, more the processing delay. So let's say you have one YouTube packet of 1000 bytes, and then there is a one VoIP packet of 20 bytes. And if there is a no service differentiation, router will take that YouTube packet first, process it, and our poor VoIP packet has to wait till the router finishes the processing. This will increase the latency. Now even if Mohan's call gets through, what will happen? That his call's quality will be so poor that they may not be able to talk. And even if they are able to talk, there will be an echo overlapping and finally call will drop. So what should network do to make Mohan's call healthy? First thing, if this base station has some kind of bandwidth reserved for it, for a wipe call, so that Mohan's wipe did not need to struggle to get that, that bandwidth allocation. And second thing is, if there is an intelligence in router to identify the wipe packet, and that time you will put aside the YouTube packet and it will take the VoIP packet for, our, for the on priority process processing. So in here what we are doing is we are injecting service differentiation. We are injecting service differentiation and first you identify the entity or packets which require the service differentiation and then you prioritize that processing. If we do that, we will maintain the latency of entire end-to-end -end chain. Now this is what 3GB QoS concept is. 3GPP is an intermediary standard made by uh, man equipment manufacturers, system integrators, equipment vendors, service providers, and they they come up with one QoS framework to prioritize voice into a data network. Now, how they do it? They have called a virtual entity called bearer. Now, bearer is is a specific parameters. So, so a time of when a, a device asks for a service. 
they exchange those parameters. That is called bearer. Now LT has a dedicated bearer and default bearer. Now dedicated bearer are established on demand. Now these parameters are established on demand, while default bearer are always on. So when, let's say, when your device switches on first time, where LT enable device, it registers with the network. Network gives some IP address and establishes the de default peer. After that, when network wants to make a voice call, it will ask for a new dedicated peer. And network will give it new dedicated peer using the same IP address but with different QoS parameters. So what we are doing is, we are creating two bearers here. One is default and another is dedicated with separate QoS parameters. Because of the separate QoS parameters, now network has that intelligence that it can fish out the voice packets based on those QoS parameters and then treat differently. So, for example, a VoIP signaling. Now, default bearer has to be always on. Why? Because default bearer consists IP address. And network needs to track your device whenever there is an incoming packet or incoming call. So, so default bearer is always on. Always on means that it has your IP address. So that it, it, it's on till your device is powered on. If you, you power off your device, then you, you first flush out all the default bearer settings as well. And when you power on once again, you establish new default bearer. While in dedicated bearer, is established on demand. Now, what are those QoS parameters which is, which is, which is attached to all, of all these bearers? The one is QCI. QCI is a parameter, it is number one to nine, like voice is number one, and uh, VoIP signaling is number five, and uh, your email, Gmail, your HTTP traffic is number eight. That's the QCI marking has been given. The service to identifier is your end-to-end -end service from your SIP client to your SIP server, your stream of data is going, so the entire stream has been given one service to identifier. That identifier is used by mediation system for the performance management. Our is an allocation retention priority. When there is a congestion, which packet should be prioritized? There is a congestion, network receives two packets, two requests, <coughs> one is from YouTube, one is for wipe, network will accept wipe, network will not give access to the YouTube. That's allocation. Retention is when there is a congestion, network has to drop the packets so that it, it cannot chalk itself. So which packet is supposed to be dropped? At that time, voice will, voice will be the last packet to be dropped. That is mentioned in R. Now, how QA is implemented? Now, this is the chart which is released by 3GPP. This is followed by worldwide, uh, sorry, is pro provided across the worldwide. at and follows this. Is a QCI1, which is voice. So, whenever router tear off the packet, reads the QCI1 and priority 2, GBR bearer, you understand this is a voice packet. And then it will provide the priority. So, this graph is visual. This is what is uh, across the globe, is, this is how it's is implemented. Now, very fast, um, we know that uh, voice QoS marking has been given to the voice, but network has to understand the QoS uh, voice packets, right? So what happens is, this is the service flow here, here. So whenever there's an incoming packet, there are filters are there in the PDN gateway. Filters mean they have a destination port, there's a source port, and based on the source and destination port, they will identify the voice stream. Once they have identified the voice stream, they will start marking QCI1, <coughs> QCI1, QCI1, and those packets will start flow flowing in this direction, crossing all the network, and all these uh, entities will read the QCI1 and give the priority treatment. When you are making a voice call, uplinking, at that time your UE will have those filters installed, and UE will, using the source port and, uh, source, source, uh, uh, port and the destination port, UE will know this is the voice call, and then UE will mark each packet originated from this. All this, all this system will do the priority treatment based on those markings. So this is how QA is implemented. So in short, QA's parameters are QCI, ARP, and service law, uh, service law identification are applied to QA's bearers. QA's bearers provide the service differentiation. And based on service differentiation, network able to provide a prioritized treatment to the VoIP packets. And at the end, we are able to get the HD quality voice exactly at what we are going is in 3G. So um, this is my summary. And I'm open to any questions if you have.
any questions